Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be checking out Ragolith Linux. So let's get started. So first off, I'm gonna leave a link to what I'm talking about in the description down below. And if I'm saying their name wrong, I am sorry because I think it's pronounced that way. But yeah, I'll leave a word right here to see how it's supposed to be really pronounced. But anyway, um, to begin, this operating system is actually based off the premise of using i3 on top of Ubuntu. And i3 is a Windows tiling manager. If you've never used it before, it's a really cool window manager, especially for laptops. The whole ideal of Windows Tile Manager is so you don't have stuff overlapping each other and it's very keyboard friendly. You practically don't even need to use a mouse just to get windows to spawn or move them around. So that's really nice if you got a laptop that you don't really like to use a trackpad or the trackpad doesn't work that well. Just like what I'm dealing with on the PicoGo Linux, the little seven inch laptop. Right now I'm installing this guy in there too. Well, why am I showing you this operating system? Well, a couple of weeks ago, I was trying to put an i3 operating system together. So I was creating a script and everything. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And I came across this Linux during my research. So I decided to check it out. And I'm, I mean, man, this definitely wowed me because they've done so many customizations to this to make i3 just work. And that's literally what I was trying to do from the ground up. So why reinvent the wheel when somebody else did it already? Let me show you around this operating system if you're not too familiar with it. First, like I said, is using a Ubuntu base. So you're gonna get a lot of the GNOME utilities, which is great because when building an i3 system, you would have to put those into consideration on what power utility you're gonna be using, what background manager, all this other stuff. But since this is based off Ubuntu and GNOME, you already have those selected. By hitting Windows key C, you're gonna get the window of whatever you want as far as the settings. You can change the background, you can change the mouse, the power settings is all here. Spawning windows, like a terminal, would be Windows key Enter. And if you spawn it again, there is a tile. And if I wanted to spawn it underneath that one, I would go hit backspace, window backspace, and then hit Enter again, and boom, I have another window there. Now if I want to spawn it to the right side, and I want to spawn a browser, I could spawn a browser right there. So it's basically makes it easy for you to have a tiling manager and see all your work in one spot without all this stuff overlapping. Obviously, if you want to float the window, you could do that too by Windows key Shift F. And now I have a floating Firefox, you know, like that's basically you could turn it into a regular window manager if you needed to. Uh, all these keys and shortcuts are actually in this little I thing if you're not too familiar with how they set up their shortcuts. But if you're familiar with i3, you probably know what you're looking for. And you could change all these settings around and change all the shortcuts to your liking, but I would keep it for default for now. Uh, one of the things that they did was uh, include an actual theme manager, not a manager, actually a theme changer called uh, Regolith Looks. And you could actually change a theme using this. Right now I only have one look, which is the one you're looking at right now. And they actually have a GitHub that has many different looks, which I'll leave a link down in the description below. Anyway, okay, going back to what we were talking about, you basically could spawn as much windows as you want and you have all your configurations pre-built into the system without having to worry about like power managers and stuff. Next thing you wanna know is the menu. Do they have like a menu system? Whole, uh, pressing Windows key space will give you the, this is actually Rofi, the program called Rofi, but you could run whatever software you want. So if I want to use GNOME tweak tools, there I have my GNOME tweak tools pop up and if I wanted to use another thing like system monitor there you go my system monitor now i set my system monitor to be always float so that's why it came up float and not as a tile so you could do that in the settings as well anyway i'm not going to go too much into configuring this guy you, there's a lot of resources on their website which i'll show you the documentation is pretty good as far as how to configure everything but i am going to go through setting up some pieces of my of this computer because this is a fresh install of this and I'll show you how I would fully utilize stuff and describe what I'm kind of trying to do at this time. First, if I need some software, I could always go to a software program that uh, GNOME ships and I could turn this into a float just so I could see things better. And I could also shift this into the second screen uh, so I could always just have its own window or own desktop just to do its things. And I kind of want to install, say, Steam. So let's do Steam. Steam installer, there you go, install. It works really well in this environment. Let's go back into here, and I kind of want to install Wine. So let's close this out, close this out, and Google Ubuntu Wine 5, oops, not 6, 5. 
And I kind of found this guy from Ubuntu Handbook. He does it really well. It's a matter of copy and paste. So I'm just going to scroll down to the sections that I need, which is this. Grab that. Uh, take this key. Grab that as well. And take this. Since I'm not using Eon, I got to change it to Bionic. There you go. I also got to add this port to get, I think, SDL2 installed. There you go. So it's so super easy to configure. Now that this is done, I could also, I could close this out and Steam should be in my menus now. So now I'm installing Steam, head back into menu one, sudo app install wine hq devel one gig of space let's go through with that spawn a different window actually i'll spawn it on the bottom and in here i kind of want to install wine tricks not through um their, but through here through their github i'm going to copy this paste that chmod wine tricks sudo and the wine tricks and move that over to yeah right now i'm just setting up um wine so i could run some windows programs user bin whoop steam is updating so that should be working soon let's toss that back into window two it should start up soon asking me for username and password and yeah basically you could see how i'm using it with multiple windows and if i really wanted to i could also spawn another browser or i could just open a tab and bring it down to the bottom and no no to split it because i'm that's what this window manager is for uh steam is working i'm not going to install any games that's actually going to be for my gaming channel i am going to be installing some games soon and i'm going to be uploading a video there this sunday so if you guys don't follow me on my gaming channel i'll leave a link down in the description for that on how i install steam games for linux so moving forward as you can see i this is how i normally run my operating system with multiple uh, terminals and if i needed to i could just spawn my little browser here and transfer files if i needed to it, it's basically all set up and it's smart enough to know if I'm using one thing, it doesn't have edges. If I spawn a second one, it'll automatically create edges for me. So it's the smart spacing that they have over here. Ultimately, if you need to like spawn more windows, you can. And I could do H top here. Whoop. If I could type, and I don't even have that installed. Let's see. Oh, I really don't have that installed. Okay, so now that wine is installed over here, I could do wine config, let that happen. Let's do h top. Oh, I have too many cores for it to show up. Uh, I also want to install remote desktop. So let's go back into software and minimize doesn't work in this because there is no title bar to minimize this in so it's either you close it or you leave it up or you do whatever you want to do with it but there's no minimize i would just normally if i need to minimize something i would just throw it into like another window so it's here and you could spawn up to 10 windows i mean that 10 desktops um remina this is what i need this is the stable version snap store version perfect Let's install that. Get my wine to work. This one I don't need so I can see my cores. So you can see how I'm like just playing around with this and it's like typing and getting all these windows to work. It's really cool. Obviously, if you're using browsers, you do need the mouse, but I love using this desktop, especially if it's so efficient. I, I love using it during work. Uh, now that I got Remnant desktop, uh, let's see. So how I would find the settings, it's actually an ETC. Oh, I could actually copy those. Let's pop this open because I need to get these in too. Oops. 
copy. So this way I could use uh, printer, discovery, copy. Let's do this one too, copy. And password services, copy. Anyway, I'm not gonna bore you with more installation details, but if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this operating system, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys like more systems like this, let me know. So if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.